Hello, Matt Osborne here. Uh, good evening from the UK. It's currently 11 p.m. on a Friday night. Instead of doing what normal human beings do and kind of go out and enjoy themselves, I've been busy blogging and preparing the blog to go with this video. So make sure you click the link below this video because there's a ton of information. This video is more to give you a taste of what's in the blog post so you find the blog post. And so with that said, before my eye bags get any bigger, in this video I'm going to talk about comparing the Leica R6 SLR camera to a Nikon FE2 SLR camera. Why am I doing this? Because I've got good results on the Nikon FE2 in the past and I've recently bought a Leica R6. So I thought it only makes sense to compare the Nikon to the Leica. So to cut to the point, this video will compare the Leica R6 with a Leica Summicron 50mm f2 lens versus the Nikon FE2 with a Nikkor 50mm f1.8 version 3 pancake lens. Both cameras were loaded with Kodak Vision 3 motion picture film. And if you're not sure what that is, I'll link a previous video to what is Kodak motion picture film and how to develop it, how to buy it, that kind of thing in the description. So again, check the description. For this test I travelled back to London and I did two model shoots with agency models and then for certain poses I tried to shoot the same pose and the same expression with both cameras, the Nikon and the Leica. Uh, the rest of the day was kind of shooting as normal so there'd be some examples with just one camera and some examples with just the other camera and then there'd be some set photos where I shot both images with both cameras to try and make it a bit more of a comparable test. In terms of the geeky details I used in-camera metering for my exposure. I shot the expired Kodak Vision 3 500T motion picture film at ISO 200 because it's expired so I tend to overexpose it. I shot both lenses at f2 aperture and both lenses had no lens hood attached or no lens hood extended to try and make it more of a fair test. Once I shot the photos and brought the film back home I then cross processed the ECN2 motion picture film in C41 chemistry. Again, watch that video if that made no sense to you whatsoever. I process all the rolls of film in the same three roll Patterson developing tank to make sure there's no kind of differences in my developing. I then scanned all the images on an Epson V800 flatbed scanner. And then I imported all the TIFF files into Lightroom to correct, say, the exposure, uh, adjust the colours if necessary, just adjusting it by eye. And then I exported all the photos as small JPEG files. And then using those images, I then put together the blog post. So I did some images where you've got a swipe, so you can swipe left to right and see the difference with your like image on the left hand side, Nick and Effie 2 image on the right hand side, and then you've got a little slider. And as you swipe across, you'll see one side will be shot with the Leica, one side shot with the Nikon. You'll recognize what I mean when you see it on the blog. It's quite a useful way to compare two images. For completeness, I then included all the like R photos and I included all the Nikon FE2 photos in two separate kind of galleries. So you can see all the images from the same shoot and make your own mind up in terms of whether one camera did better or the other. Here I'll bring up some of the same images to give you a taster. So looking at the screen on the left is the like R6, on the right the Nikon FE2. And then again on this photo on the left like R6, on the right Nikon FE2. All of these photos are shot with the 50mm lenses at ISO 200 on motion picture film. Again, Leica R6 on the left, Nikon FE2 on the right. And here's a random selection of photos shot with either the Leica R6 or the Nikon FE2. The question is, can you tell the difference which photos were taken with the Leica R6 and which photos were taken with a Nikon? If you look carefully, you'll see the trend where the like R6 photos have a warmer tone and the Nikon FE2 using the particular lens I used show a cooler blue tone. To my eyes the Leica R6 photos have better contrast or more contrast and better flare resistance and the Nikon FE2 show more flare and lower contrast. My theory for why the Nikkor 50 1.8 lens flared more than the Leica the design of the Nikkor 50 1.8 pancake means the front element is pretty exposed, open to the, the bright light. Whereas if you look at the Leica Summicron R50 f2 lens, it has more of a recessed front element, protecting it slightly from the sun. 
And so the question is, let me know in the comments below, which camera do you think took the better photos? Do you think the Lycra 6 took the better images? They tend to be slightly warmer, as I say, better contrast and maybe similar sharpness to the nickel. Or do you prefer the more imperfect images with the lower contrast, slightly more flare, bluer tones and maybe a slightly grainier look? At the risk of upsetting my fellow Leica shooters, being someone that used to paint and draw before picking up my first camera, I quite enjoy arty things. And so for that reason, I often find imperfect photos to be more perfect, i.e. more favorable to me than perfect. Uh, a great example of this is the Nikon D800, slightly off topic. I really didn't like the Nikon D800 because it was just so perfect and so clinical. It just didn't do anything for me. And then I replaced that with the Leica M9 and the imperfect CCD sensor was just so much better for me. So I like imperfect. And so with that said, I actually prefer the blue, slightly lower contrast, a bit of flare, nickel FE2 photos, even though I'm a Leica fanboy. But let me know what you think. And that then brings me onto the question, why did I do this test in the first place? I'm not just doing it for the sake of making videos. I actually wanted to know for myself because at the moment we've still got travel restrictions, but as soon as I can fly more easily and get back to doing my overseas photo shoots, I generally use small cameras which work well. And the Nikon FE2 is a smaller, more affordable version of the like R6. My theory was if I can take the same images with my Nikon, then I'll use that as my travel camera and I'll use the like R6 as my UK camera, if that makes sense. And so with that said, if we rule out the images for a moment, there is five reasons why the Nikon FE2 is better than the like R6. Again, Leica fans don't hate me. You know, I love Leica, but this is just fact in this instance. Okay, number one, the Nikon FE2 weighs 550 grams. The R6 weighs 625 grams. That's like 12% lighter and it's also smaller. So, so when you're traveling with one carry-on bag, every gram really does count. That's why the Nikon ticks the box for me in this instance. Number two, the flash sync speed of the FE2 is one over 250 of a second, whereas the maximum flash sync speed of the R6 is only one over 100. If you use flash photography with ambient light as I do, Again, it's much more useful to have a faster maximum flash sync speed. And then number three is very similar. The maximum shutter speed of the FE2 is one over four thousandth of a second, whereas the Leica R6 is only one over one thousandth of a second. Now, if you're using fast lenses, say a 50 1.4, this is actually a problem because if you've got, say, ISO 400 film loaded, one over one thousandth of a second is not fast enough a shutter speed to reduce the daylight so not to overexpose your image without having to use ND filters and things like that. So it is a kind of a real world problem if you're shooting anywhere with a bit of bright sunshine. So again, tick box to Nikon and for Leica, you could get the Leica R6.2, which gives you one over 2000th of a second. But I think if you want to go higher than that with a Leica, you, I think you need to get the Leica R8 or Leica R9. Could be wrong on that. Let me know in the comments if I got that wrong. But I believe the R8 and the R9 have a even faster maximum shutter speed. <laughs> Number four, if you enjoy using classic lenses or a mix of lenses you find on eBay, one problem with the Leica R system is the Leica R mount is not really compatible with other systems. Meaning if you shoot Leica R cameras, you can only shoot Leica R lenses. This is obviously great if you enjoy using Leica R lenses and that's all great. But for argument's sake, let's say you've got a really nice M42 lens and you want to adapt it to your Nikon camera. If you shoot with Nikon, you can then use your M42 lens on your Nikon. The second advantage within the same advantage is Nikon lenses are cheaper. They can be smaller and lighter, which is good for me for travel. They are made by third parties as well. For example, Voigtlander make Nikon mount lenses and they are amazing. See that video? Great lenses. And where was I going with this? Oh yes, and then lastly, Nikon made so many lenses for the Nikon F mount over the years. You pretty much have unlimited lenses available to you. Whereas like our lenses, there are a few, but they're generally harder to find and at a much higher price point in most cases. And then lastly, the camera price. 
the price of a reasonably nice condition Nikon FE2. You could be paying around £250. I'll put it up on the screen what it is in dollars. Whereas for like R6, you're going to be paying roughly £500 plus pounds for one in nice condition. So again, 50% cheaper for the Nikon. The lenses are cheaper, the camera is smaller, and it has more functionality. So the Nikons do offer great value for money compared to Leica. If you're a diehard Leica fan and you really love Leica, like say, Summicron lenses, I'm using a Summicron to record this video. They do make excellent videos. Um, well, well, I'm not saying I'm excellent, but do you know what I mean? The rendering in the background makes me better than real life. <laughs> yes, like our lenses are obviously renowned for being amazing for video. But in terms of photos, I found the nickel slightly imperfect lenses almost more perfect in this very limited test that I did. As I mentioned, I've only included a fraction of the images in this video that are included in the blog. So this video is more of a one-off in terms of there's a whole blog post written just for this video because I wanted to share all the images so you can kind of see them up close and you can swipe left and right yourself without having to like pause the video. I just thought it'd be much easier to draw your own conclusions. So do check the link to get the most out of this test for yourself. I am interested myself as a long-term like M shooter in terms of what camera is going to give me the best results. I feel like our camera may be better in terms of allowing me to get closer to my models to get the shots that I want to get. But in terms of image quality, can the like R match the like M lenses? We shall see. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do the like M versus like R shootout, and I'll try and spend more multiple hours trying to do that and develop the film, scan the film, process the film. And they make videos at like midnight with my eyes like slits. <laughs> and with that said, before I go to sleep, please do hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It does help me out a lot and it lets me know that you want me to do perhaps similar videos to this in the future. If you've not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel, now's your time to do so. There's always going to be more lenses, more cameras, more testing coming on this channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And lastly, have you joined my Patreon yet? must be getting close now to perhaps 200 posts which means for the price of roughly one cup of coffee or what's that less than one mcdonald's or whatever snacky food you eat you can get access to almost 200 posts that's videos photos written content polls and lots of other things in between in terms of how does it work you can sign up today and then if you don't like it you can cancel it after one month so you're not tied in and there's no obligation to keep paying if you enjoy the content, of course, stay with us and you can enjoy the content going forward. But if you just want to try it for one month, you can do that. And lastly, since the lockdowns have lifted in the UK, I've started to do a lot more teaching like I used to. I've been in London, I think, the last four weekends, either teaching or working with agencies, doing model workshops, things like that. If you're interested in learning how to get into model photography, perhaps you've got all the gear, but you just don't quite know how to use all your very nice cameras, Leicas or Nikon or otherwise, how to approach the model to do the to bring it all together. I totally understand, although I didn't have the gear at that time. I had a camera and I really wanted to work out how to photograph models, but I had the problem that I couldn't even hold eye contact with models. Um, watch my Introvert Does Glamour Photography video, one of my very early videos. And so with that background and now maybe 10, 11 years experience of photographing models all over Europe and some in the US, and that kind of steep learning curve that I've gone through personally, and now find myself in a really strong position where I can share everything I've learned over the last 10 years, probably 500 model shoots, and teach it to you in a really kind of condensed, easily digestible format so that you can then fast track to do your own model photography and organize your own portrait shoots, model shoots, things like that. So again, if you're interested in workshops, either check the blog or join Patreon and get in touch and we can sort something out. If you live a million miles away, Alaska or South America or anywhere else, I also offer Zoom calls through Patreon. So again, check out Patreon and I can set up a Zoom call with you. It can be to help you purchase your first Leica camera. It can be to help get you started with your film camera that you just bought on eBay that doesn't seem to work and perhaps you put the film in backwards or something like that. And if there's anything else I can help with, just get in touch. That's it. Thanks for watching. Time to sleep. Check out the blog link below for all the images and see you in the next video. Bye.